Hey, what's up? This is Mark at Alchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. Today we're working on our Phoenix 1.4 chat server, and this is part five of many. If you're new to the series, go to alchemist.camp slash episodes, and you can see them all here and get caught back up. Last time we made an auth plug that let us restrict access to different parts of the app to only users who are logged in or only admin users or only a particular user. And now it's time to finally get to the chat rooms themselves and use Phoenix channels. As you can see, our chat rooms are pretty basic. So basic, in fact, they don't have a chat. They just have a name and a description and a title. So let's start by working on this page, which is our our room show, I believe. Yes, here's the template. So let's change this show room in the title to room colon and the name of the room, just since that's going to be a little bit more useful than saying show room. We've got room available in this template, so just room.name. That's a little bit better, and we don't need any of this since we've already got the name in the title. Now what we'll do is we'll leave all of this on the left half of the page and we'll add the room itself on the right half. So to do that, we'll make a couple of divs for styling. Uh, the first one will just have a class of row and the next one will have a class of column and I'm guessing here, but we'll try column 50. And we'll put everything that was on the page above the navigation at the bottom into this layout here. We did make the page a little bit narrower, so it had to wrap sooner. And now let's add a second column. So this one will be for the chat. We'll just call this one uh, also a column chat class in there. And at the top, we'll make a title for the chat. We'll just make this an H. Actually, we'll make it an H2 chat. And we want to make three sections here. The top will be where we'll display chats. Then under that, we'll have a text area where people can enter their new chats. Then under that, a submit button. So we'll start with the container for all the messages that have already been shown. We'll make a div with an ID of msg-container. And this will be empty. This just has chats that will be added dynamically. And since uh, we start with zero chats, we'll have nothing in that div. After the message container, we'll just add a div. Inside the div, we'll have a text area where people input their chats. And that'll have an ID of msg input. Don't need a name for it. Actually, let's full screen this because it's a few things. We don't need columns. We'll say three rows, and then we'll add a placeholder of chat here. That's good for the text area. Below that is a button, and we give it an idea of message submit, and a class of button and column as well. We'll give it type equals submit and the text will be send. Okay, that looks a lot more like a chat room, doesn't do anything, but we've got these IDs in here so we can grab uh, whatever part of it we need to interact with it with JavaScript. And there's one more thing we need, and that is we need to add some data to the page just so we know which room it is. So the room ID is two, we wanna be able to pass that along to the channel. We'll use Phoenix's content tag, which lets you make any HTML tag you want. This is a div, and it's got an ID of room. This ID is the HTML ID. Then it also has some data, and that data attribute is an ID. So this would be like a data-ID of room.id. Do, and there's nothing inside of it, so we'll just put an end here. Let's save that and then take a look at our room. So inspect the element, then above it, we should have, there we go, div ID is room, data ID 
is two. So we can just grab this room ID out of this div. All right, the next step is to set up the channels on the server. So to do that, we need to go to our lib slash web slash channels. You can see we've got a user socket. This user socket is mostly just comments and boilerplate. We're not gonna change anything here or here, but we will uncomment this one line and change this from room to rooms. So now we have a channel for rooms and we're going to be able to match topics for anything that follows rooms. So we could have rooms colon one, rooms colon two. We could have other strings, but for now we're just going to be uh, labeling them by the ID of the room. Then we need a room channel. So that's the same directory. We'll make a new file called roomchannel.ex. The module will be named chitchatweb.rooms, or just room channel, as we would expect. And then we're going to use Phoenix, or use chitchatweb channel. And this is actually just about the same thing as using Phoenix channel. If we scroll down to chit chat web, so we've got a lot of stuff in here under the channel function. All we have is use Phoenix channel and import chit chat web get text. And these are inside of a quote do block, which means that it's the same thing as if we had just written these two lines into the source code for room channel right here. And you see the green squigglies that's because phoenix.channel requires we have a join three function and we don't have one so let's add that now uh, join and join on a topic topic is going to be rooms colon something and we'll pattern match an id out of that so if we have rooms colon two then we have room id of two payload we're not going to do anything with a socket we will use this will just return a tuple with OK, and then the socket, but we'll transform that through a sign. Socket key value, so the socket is the socket. The key is room ID, and then the value is going to be this room ID that we captured off of rooms, but that's going. this is a string, so this would capture like a string with the number two in it. We wanna change that to an integer since the IDs are, are actually stored as integers in our app. So we'll say string.2 integer of room ID. Got an extra parenthesis there. Okay, that looks good. So this assign function looks like and really acts like the assign in plug.con.assign. We're just assigning a value under a certain key and then we've got basically the same thing back. We've still got the same socket we pass along, just like we do with plug.con. All right, now we're going to make a function to handle incoming events. So handle in, and this is going to look for new chat events. We'll call it that. We've got a payload and a socket. We'll broadcast that and send it to the same socket. The event is going to be new chat. And the message we send is actually going to be a struct that will build up over time. For now, we're just going to send a body of whatever body came in on the payload. So payload body. And then we also need a reply here. So reply, okay, and the socket. So when we get this incoming new chat, we broadcast the body that was in the payload of that chat to everyone on the channel. Then the reply OK and socket just passes the same socket along, untransformed to the front end. All right, that pretty much handles what we need to do on the server side. So let's go to the JavaScript side. First thing we'll do is we'll make a new file for rooms, we'll call it room.js. And this room.js file will export just one thing. And we'll define a room up here. So let room equal everything inside. 
first we'll have an init function and the init function will take a socket and an HTML element so we'll call it L. That element that we pass in is going to be the same element that we created in the room show page with the data attribute up here. Data ID equals two so we'll be able to get that two off of it and know what the room ID is. L dot get attribute of room uh, of data ID and just to make sure we have everything working properly we'll put a console log in there console.log element L room ID of room ID okay then after we've got the room ID, the next thing to do is connect the socket. And that's just socket.connect. Once we've connected the socket, then we can join the channel. But since there might be some asynchronous things to resolve first, let's make it a separate onReady function. So we'll just call this .onReady with room ID and the socket. Once that's done, we need to make the onReady function. OnReady takes a room ID and a socket. And for now, we'll just add the functionality to join the channel. So let room channel equal socket dot channel of rooms colon plus room ID. We're just building it back up. And then room channel dot join is all we'll need, but we'll add uh, receive OK. And after we get the OK, we'll take the response and console.log joined room channel. give the response there then we'll add another one for error and in that case we want to do basically the same thing except we'll just say there was an error and give the reason console.log of failed to join and then whatever the reason was let's full screen that this looks like it should work I'm just got to make a couple of small changes here in socket.js. You can see here at the top, we've got a socket that comes from the Phoenix.js library. And then we're just using that to create a new socket. Here's the endpoint of slash socket. The only parameter we have is a token where we're getting the user token from the window. We haven't actually set that up, but we'll do that next video probably. What we'll do here is we'll add another parameter and this parameter is going to be uh, a logger. So logger, uh, let's see, the function will take kind message and data and we'll console.log the same stuff, kind and then the message and then the data outside of this because data is going to be an object most likely. All right. With this done, let's look at the bottom. We don't need to connect to the socket or join the channel because that's already done in rooms.js. Save that. Then uh, we should also look at app.js. We've got to import the socket and that is already here commented for us. Then we also need to import room from room. With that, we'll also have to call the init function. So room.init, and we need to pass it the socket, which we've already got above. And then we also need to pass it the element that has the data attribute we need. So document.get element by ID. ID was room and the data ID is there so 
and that should do it. Let's get out of full screen and restart the server. And it looks like we have joined the room and we got an okay reply. So see if the front end looks okay. It does. We've got room ID of two. We've got an okay response. So we're joining the channel. The next step is to actually send chats over it. What we're going to do here is when someone clicks this button that has the ID of message submit, we're going to look inside this text area, which has an ID of message input, process whatever's in there and send it up to the server. Let's close that and go back to room.js. So we're going to need to get a little bit more here. We've got a room channel. We also need to get a message input. And that message input is going to be document.get element by ID msg dash input. Then we also need to get the button, and we'll call that post button. And that's going to be document dot get element by ID of message submit. Then we'll add an event listener to that post button. Add event listener so that when somebody clicks on it, we'll push that. Whoa. Whoa, 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 what was that? That was that was the IDE being too helpful. We'll push a new chat event onto the room channel. Push new chat and the payload is just going to be body of whatever was inside that message input. So message input dot value. We'll pass along any errors that might come back. Receive error. And then the last thing we need to do is uh, set the, the message input to blank again. So message input dot value equals empty string. So that should be enough to post something. Let's give it a try, ASDF. And that looks pretty good. We see incoming new chat body ASDF. So all that's left now is to display the chats up here in the uh, message container. And we should have our basic anonymous chat working. And the next thing we need is the room channel to handle the incoming chat events. So room channel dot on new chat. We'll take whatever the response is and then we'll console log it. And we'll also render it to the screen and that's going to be a lot more work. So we'll break that into a separate function. We'll just say this dot render new chat or just render chat and that's going to take the message container which we haven't captured yet and the response so save that and let message container equal document dot get element by id message container so this render chat function is going to go outside of the on ready down here, I'll scroll up so there's plenty of room to see it. Render chat takes the message container and it takes the response. We actually don't want the whole response. We just really want to know what the body of the chat is. That may change as we make the chats a little bit more fully featured and add timestamps or something like that to it in the future. First thing we need is a new div. So let div equal document dot create element div and then we'll set the divs inner HTML as so basically we want some kind of wrapper I'm gonna make it a span and that's because span won't take up so much space then we want the name 
put that in bold. And we don't have a way to get the name of the user that's logged in from the channel right now. In order to do that, we need to use the Phoenix token, which we'll do next episode. So for now, everyone is anonymous. And close that. And then we need the content of their chat itself, which is in body. And then we need to append it to the message container. So message container dot append child of our div. And then if we have a lot of messages, we're also going to want to scroll the container. So message container dot scroll top equals message container dot scroll height. Right, let's give that a try. ASDF, and that looks pretty good. All right, final step is we've actually got a little problem here. This body could be anything. People could have input any sort of HTML they want. So chatters can do things like this. And unfortunately, it's, uh, it's a bit of a problem. So uh, just having bold might be fine, but that doesn't mean you want all of HTML because there's always someone out there who will just really abuse the feature and uh, make it obnoxious for everybody. So in order to stop that, what we've got to do is sanitize the HTML or, or escape it. So we'll make another function called escape and that just takes some input. And all this is going to do is create a div, then append a text node child to that div with the input we want, and then just return the inner HTML. So it's going to be in text. So let div, you know what? It's actually the same line as this one. So we'll just steal it like so. div.append child and create a new text node document dot create text node using the input return div dot inner HTML this dot ESC and now that is as it should be and this is also a pretty good stopping spot. We have anonymous chat working between two windows, and we could certainly have many more, and all would continue working fine. Next episode, we'll dig into using phoenix.token to set up authentication for our channels. We'll actually refactor that auth module so that once someone is logged in, they are authenticated across whatever they're using, tokens, sessions, all of it, and when they log out, it will clear out all of them. If you found this video useful or you liked it, then like it on YouTube and definitely tell your friends about it, and I'll see you next time.